Hi, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Jamie Lee. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, shoes. Now I tend to joke that I have got champagne taste on a beer budget and this is no much more so true than when it comes to shoes. But one thing that I have found over my many years of shopping, of seeking out more affordable alternatives to designer brands and items that I love is that good quality comes at every price. The dupes that I'm going to be sharing today are pretty much predominantly made with leather. So don't worry, there are no Shein dupes here at all. These are great quality shoes that won't break the bank but will give you that designer look for less. So I want to dive right into it and actually talk about the shoes which really inspired me to film another one of these videos and it is a dupe for the Jill Sander Whip Stitch Ballet Flats. I've had these shoes on my witch list for a really long time. I actually bought the heeled version but they just didn't really quite work out for me uh, but the black ones are the ones I've had my eye on. I walked into Cos and when I saw these really buttery soft black ballet flats with that kind of squared off toe detail. I just immediately felt like these were very reminiscent of the Jill Sander ones. Now having purchased the Jill Sander shoes before, knowing what the leather is like, I can say without a doubt that the leather on the Cos ones is so much nicer. It is incredibly supple and I did find actually, um, I tried them on in my usual size. I'm always a European 40 or a US 9 and they were way too big. My feet were swimming in them and I have wide feet too. So the 39 were the ones that I found fit perfectly. I did end up purchasing these and I found that the leather kind of just gave really nicely after wearing them for a couple of hours because it is that buttery soft kind of leather. So they're a beautiful shoe uh, and definitely one that I can hand on heart recommend because is great quality as well. Next I want to talk about a dupe for the Mac and Mac or is it Match and Match Bow Heels. You've probably seen these everywhere. These shoes are so expensive and they're really kind of glamorous and glitzy. The type of shoe that's perfect if you need something for a night out and you want a style that's a little bit feminine. I really love the way that they are kind of um, bejeweled around the ankle. I just think it is such a nice way to add a bit of sparkle to your outfit. Tony Bianco, it's an Australian brand. They do a lot of designer dupes. A lot of their shoes are inspired by designer brands and I really liked their version of this shoe. It only comes in satin. There's uh, I think a black, a neutral, and then two brights. So you've got a few options there and I find that their shoes are always good quality and they're generally pretty comfortable as well. So a good one to rely on and I thought they were a really great alternative. The other one is actually an Amazon find and they have so many colors, both in the satin and the PVC. And I'm recommending these because when I was in Dallas, I saw a woman wearing them. And I kid you not, when I spoke to her the next day, I said, oh, you had the Mac and Mac heels on. And she said, no, they're from Amazon. And I really couldn't believe it, how similar they were. The likeness was just uncanny and the price is amazing. I feel like they're under 60 US dollars, so a really good steal. Okay, I feel like I haven't heard anyone talk about the Acne Studios Jensen boots for a long time, but it is such a classic silhouette and style from the brand. I have owned them and I actually decided to sell them because I preferred a different boot in my sort of shoe wardrobe. However, on that whole journey to buying those shoes, I found an incredible dupe and I was really thrilled to see that is still in production. It's from Mark Fisher and they come in suede. I believe they also do a leather as well. Lots of different color options and these are perfect if you have wide feet. These have been tried and tested by me. The only thing to keep in mind with suede, especially lighter colors, is that they are prone to getting marked up but they're so comfortable, require zero break-in period at all, and I didn't really feel like they were pinching my feet whatsoever. Great as well if you want to wear a really thick sock with them because they do fit a bit on the wider side and those were true to size. Okay, so a recent sale purchase of mine were the Jerry sandals from The Row. This is what they look like. They're kind of that dad sandal-esque vibe with a bit of a platform. I really love these and they were a series MVP during my trip to Dallas. I just found them so comfortable and great for walking around in. They also juxtapose nicely with really feminine silhouettes. I found a great alternative from a brand called Doe from W Concept and I do have a discount code for that website. It's Mademoiselle 2022 and that'll give you 12% off site wide. Um, and I just thought these were great. They come in both a cream leather, a black and burgundy suede too. And you know suede shoes are always going to be comfortable because they just have this extra suppleness to them. Uh, but the likeness again, just uncanny and I thought a great 
more affordable alternative, especially if you have slightly smaller feet. Sadly, I couldn't buy a pair to try because I'm a European 40, so they don't make them in my size, but great if you do have a smaller shoe size than I do. I also wanted to share another dupe for the Row Bear sandals. I just think these are so dainty, so delicate, refined, and really elegant. Kind of the perfect going out shoe. They kind of have that barely look there vibe. Tony Bianco, again, they have a bang on match for these shoes and I really love the colors. The yellow and the green in particular are just so vibrant and that just little pop, especially if you like to wear a lot of neutrals like I do. Another really good alternative, now these ones are a little bit more expensive, is from one of my favorite shoe brands, AD. I've got them here. Um, I actually purchased these back in, I think it was January, um, and they're really, really comfortable. These are sort of the flat version, but they have that very similar sort of a vibe. And again, they're very, very good quality. My experience with AD shoes is that they require zero break-in, so comfortable from the get-go. And if you're lucky, you might be able to nab a pair on sale. I have a few dupes for the Manolo Blahnik Hungisi pumps and I feel like these shoes are iconic, right? From Sex and the City when Carrie Bradshaw gets given them by Mr. Big. And they had a moment then, they had that sort of revival when, and just like that, is that what it was called? The Sex and the City reboot came out. Um, but I feel like these shoes are still current, they're still relevant and they are another great option if you want a glitzy shoe. Kate Spade, I found, did a really beautiful version which has a pointed toe rather than that sort of more almond toe-esque vibe and I feel like they looked a little bit less glitzy. I like that they have the slingback design with the actual buckle so that you can really adjust the fit so that they are snug on your ankle and they're not going to rub. I did also see a couple of flat versions, the first one being from a brand called Nina Armando, which is a new brand to me and I haven't tried out their shoes, but these ones felt like a bit more of an inspired tape. They come in a few different colors and they have the bejeweled plate at the toe. And then Linnea Paolo, which is a brand that I've shopped from before, their shoes are good quality and they're comfortable. They also have their own take on it and I feel like the bejeweled element is the closest match to the original Manolo Blahnik Hungisi style. These have an elasticated section at the heel, which I find is really great in terms of making sure that the shoes aren't going to slip off your foot. I also really like that these have got tread on the sole so you're not going to slip when you're wearing them. I swear every single time I go to film a video someone starts doing yard work so hopefully you can't hear that buzzing noise too much. But the next pair of shoes I want to talk about are the By Far Tanya Mules. These are a style that I have and they are so chic. I've got them in the nude patent and I've said this so many times but they aren't that comfortable and I do find they sometimes slip off my foot. They do fit true to size if you manage to get them on sale and perhaps in the leather version as opposed to the patent then I think they'd probably be better. Uh, but that said, and they are such a beautiful shoe and I found a couple of alternatives. The first being from a brand called James Smith. I like the fact that these ones actually have a wooden stacked heel, but they retain that same look and feel of the original by far version. The shoe is actually in leather, so I think these ones would be nicer because it's less likely that they're going to give you blisters like patent leather can do. The second alternative is from Jeffrey Campbell, and actually I was floored to see these are 50% off. I think that made them less than $60, which is a really good price, especially knowing that the quality of Jeffrey Campbell's shoes is pretty good. They are chic and they're so elevated. I love the belly there straps. Okay, next shoe I want to talk about are the Todd's chain loafers, which I have. These are a chunky loafer, which is a real trend that we're seeing at the moment, something that I feel is really in, especially with the chain embellishment across the foot. They make a real statement. I found a bang on match from a brand called Edward Meller. They come in a few different colors, but really great way to get that look for less because I don't think that you need to spend a lot on a trend like that, especially something with such a bold embellishment across the toe. Okay, next I wanna talk about the Valentino sort of floral leather applique shoes. Just the theme of these shoes in general. They're so feminine and pretty and I really love the leather work to it. I think it is really quite detailed, special and something else. The first brand that I saw doing a really good dupe for these is Nina Armando again and I'm quite tempted to buy these for myself. They're just really feminine, so pretty and I love the slingback design as well. It's quite dainty and just seems like it would be a great way to elevate 
slightly more masculine elements in an outfit. The second option is from Linnea Paolo. Again, these ones are a flat option and I really like the fact that you've got the adjustable strap at the heel. They come in a few different colors as well and being a flat shoe, you know they're gonna be pretty comfortable. Another shoe style from Valentino that I saw a really good dupe for are the new rock studs, the ones that have the really large, like quite, quite pyramid-esque studs on them. Uh, th these are the Gladiator style that come up the ankle ever so slightly. Uh, the brand that I saw doing a really good version of it is Witchery. These have no studs on them, so they feel a little bit less costumey, but they have that Gladiator component with the way that the straps actually come up the foot. They're backless, so you're not gonna get any blisters on your heels, which is a win-win for me, because I sometimes find sandals can be a tricky one. Okay, I literally cannot go one of these videos without mentioning these shoes, but a dupe for the Chanel two-tone slingback pumps. If you have not already bought these ones from Vanelli, I don't know what you're doing with yourself. They are absolutely brilliant. Mine are in a dire need of being replaced, and I've said this in probably every single video over the last 12 to 18 months. I really need to sort that out. Um, but they're so comfortable. They are not the type of shoe that is gonna give you a single blister. I have walked kilometers and kilometers in them. I've done, I've racked up 20,000 steps walking with these in a day and they are so comfortable. I love the little low stacked heel. And actually I think the color is much nicer than the original Chanel ones too. Which speaking of Chanel, I spotted another dupe for the Chanel dance sandals. These are not for everyone. And I do kind of feel like the moment is slowly passing. However, if you do like that trend and you still want to jump on it, June do a really nice one and I really love the gold turn lock detail at the straps. I think it's really cute. I am really, really loving the Gucci Logo Diamante Slingback Kitten Heels. I think they are just so elegant, so chic. I love a kitten heel. It just gives you that little bit of extra height and it feels kind of elegant in this 1950s kind of way. Mango, oh my gosh, I prefer the mango version to the Gucci one, and I think it's because it doesn't have a logo. It's just a beautiful Diamante design. Unfortunately, they sold out in my size before I managed to snag a pair, but I am desperately hoping they're gonna come back in stock. If you have smaller feet, hopefully then you'll still find your size available, but I thought they were just such a brilliant take on that designer shoe. Very inspired as opposed to necessarily being exactly the same. Okay, another pair of shoes that I own that I found a dupe for, which I can't find them. A lot of my shoes are in storage, but it's the Golden Goose Superstar Sneakers. These are horrendously expensive, especially for something that looks distressed. Oliver Cabell, they do a brilliant alternative. They have different versions, ones that are really crisp and clean looking, and then ones that do have that distressed element to them as well. I can speak to the quality of Oliver Cabell's shoes as well. Very comfortable and uh, also just really beautiful leather too. So a great way to get that design look, but spend a lot less money. Okay, almost at the end, next pair of shoes that I wanna talk about is very much inspired by the Isabel Morant sort of studded Birkenstock-esque sandals, you know, the double strap sandals. I really like the Western vibe of this particular shoe. And I spotted that Vince Camuto have a very similar version. And they do them in these really lovely earthy colors all in a suede. Vince Camuto shoes are exceptional quality so I kind of know that for the price the quality that you're getting is well and above what I would expect for that so that's a really good alternative. Then the Jimmy Choo these are pointed toe pump with a crystal and ballast chain around the ankle. Now I have to question the practicality of these shoes. I can't imagine that they are going to be very easy to walk in or that you could walk very far on them. That said, I can't help but be drawn to them like a magpie. I love the glitzy chain around the ankle. This is very much a thing for me. And I spotted a really good alternative that is very affordable on Amazon. Now I haven't purchased these, but I do think that they look like a great option if you wanna get that look for less, especially knowing that even the designer version, you're probably gonna find that they're very impractical and not a very walkable shoe. I believe they're under the 60 US dollar mark as well, and they come in a suede and a satin version. Final pair of shoes that I found a designer dupe for that I wanted to share today is a dupe for these Salvatore Ferragamo Vara flats. I think that's what they're called. You know, the really classic ballet flats that they have been doing for years and years and years. Nina Armando, again, have a fabulous iteration of these shoes, and they are a dead ringer. Literally, I could not tell the difference beyond the fact that they don't have the Ferragamo logo on them. They come in a red and a black patent, so very, very classic styles, especially if you love that ballerina flat look. 
So those are all of the designer shoe dupes that I had to share with you in today's video. I hope that you found some new brands perhaps to explore, some more affordable options to the designer shoes that you love. And if you have a particular favorite pair, let me know in the comment section below. And actually, if you have any other dupes that you wanna share, would love if you could share those in the comment section below too, because I'm sure that I'm not alone in wanting to seek out those more affordable alternatives to the designer price point shoes. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, more fashion, style, and lifestyle videos, then I would love to have you back. So please do hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for spending some of your day with me. I am so incredibly grateful that you clicked and watched this video. And I will see you next time with a brand new one. See you very soon. Bye.